and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the exceptional meaning of angel is messenger and the exceptional meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I do like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Anne um, Alexson. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to both of us to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, find your purpose, create your future to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so that you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or an oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Anne Alexson, about becoming the new human. Now, Anne is known as the elite channel of all that is who has spent nearly two decades embodying and sharing the profound teachings of all that is. And is a leading voice in Unio Mystica, and I'm sure if I've pronounced that wrong, she'll correct me later, becoming one with source and stepping fully into the role of the new human. Today, Anne will guide us on a journey to explore what we need to do individually to raise our vibrational frequency and evolve into becoming the new human a being of light in human form, living a purpose, purposeful service to humanity. So without further delay, hello, Anne, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Ray, thank you so much. I'm absolutely delighted to be here, and I'm fabulous today. I'm always fabulous. Whether I am or not, I'm fabulous. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. And as you can tell from Anne's accent, she's in Australia. So the beauty of technology, we may moan about it sometimes, but it does give us the beauty of actually connecting far and wide. Daytime here, nighttime where Anne is, winter here, summer where Anne is. So, you know, it's absolutely amazing. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Anne and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Anne, why don't you tell us about your life journey and how we can step into our true potential as the new human? Well, uh, look, I'll take you back to the beginning, not the beginning, not, not <laughs> born, but and not the beginning of time. By the way, time doesn't exist as you've just proven. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, so it was the, coming up to two decades ago now, I had um, I was in my early early 40s, late 30s, early early 40s. And I had been living in, you know, I'd been working in corporate. I, I was married, I had children, I was exhausted all the time, I wasn't happy, and I wanted to be happy. And so I started asking the question, well, you know, why can't I be happy or how, how do you be happy? Um, and someone actually said to me one day, you know, Anne, happiness is a choice, which just made me want to slap him across the face, right? <laughs> but I didn't. Instead, what I did, and this was unusual for me, instead what I did was start to research happiness. And there were lots of books coming out at the time about happiness. Um, there were just so many books coming out about positive psychology and happiness. So I started reading them and researching and every single book I read told me the key to happiness was meditation, right? So I really tried. I tried very, very hard to meditate and it just was just beyond me. I just couldn't do it. And eventually I did find a way to do it that worked for me and it actually led me to something so far beyond happiness that, um, that I was shocked and surprised by it. So I would sit and I would breathe and I would count backwards because that's the only way I could switch my brain off. And I would hear a voice like it was inside of me but it was also outside of me. And every single time I meditated I heard this voice. It said the same thing. We are all that is, all that was, and all that ever will be. 
That's all I heard for months. And I had this sense that something wanted to, like, use my voice. I was having all this trouble with my throat and my voice. I had since, you know, growing up my entire life, I'd had trouble with my with my voice and uh, tonsils and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And then, of course, it was around this same time that I came across Abraham Hicks. And I picked up one of their books only because I'd been reading Wayne Dyer and he had mentioned them. So I went and looked for one of their books and I actually carried it around with me for six months before I even read it. I carried it everywhere. I even got on a plane, travelled 14 hours to Vegas thinking I'd read it and I brought it back with me and I still hadn't read it. But I got back and I was really, really sick. I had caught some bug or something. I was in bed for a week sweating and vomiting and just it was just the horrible, horrible experience the week after I got back. Um, and just after that finished, I picked up the book and I started reading it, but I didn't even get past the first chapter. I was already crying. It was this sense of, oh, my God, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It was all happening in my throat chakra. <laughs> anyway, so I found some people who held space for me and uh, and they very kindly, you know, kind of just supported me as I started to play with this and did what they told me to do, which was to record myself while I was meditating because I was doing all these funny head movements and arm movements and hand movements and it was just really bizarre for me. Coming out of corporate, I'd never had spiritual stuff. That had never mm. been part of my life and certainly not in part of the life that I lived with any of the people that I lived with, my whole family. It was it just wasn't a thing. So um, I thought I was going quite mad at, originally, and and it's that's normal, right? I know I know that now. But uh, then it's you know the voice started getting uh, telling me more things, and uh, and I was I had this moment of awakening where I was talking to some clients. I was a happiness coach because <laughs> I discovered how to be happy, right? So I thought I'm going to share that with people. So I started a happiness coaching business. And I was doing, between Christmas and New Year it was, and I was doing a um, a coaching call with a group that I was coaching about transitioning from one year to the next, you know, doing the vision boarding and all of that. And um, this strange voice came out of me at one point, <laughs> right? And everyone was like, what just happened? And I was like, well, you know, this is obviously I'm ready for this to happen now. And because I'm naturally speaking with excitement and um, power, it, 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 it came up, came out. But at the very first time it ever happened to me, I just was overcome with goosebumps and I like rippling goosebumps up and down my body and I felt like I was going to vomit. Um, and it was super, super powerful. I spent that day in another world, I swear to God. I was putting my hand through walls just by touching the wall and then the wall wasn't there. I was talking to trees. I was all sorts of things. Um, so that was that was when I first started doing this and uh, I was downloaded in that moment, in that day, that same day, I was downloaded with a, a body of work that I now call the teachings of all that is. Um, and then I proceeded to start using those teachings to share with the people I've been working with in happiness coaching, but then also starting to realise, well, this is actually spiritual and I, and I can start calling myself a spiritual coach or teacher or whatever, and a channel as well. It was back in the day when you, people didn't really talk about that sort of stuff on social media, uh, but I never, I didn't know that, so I just did it. I just talked about it. Got lots of blowback from spiritual people. Uh, about you know <laughs> how you're not supposed to <laughs> and these sorts of things but um yeah so I, I started um doing healing work with people I started doing um what I have always just called light healing but which I now understand from up from what's happening in the world now um light language is a really big thing now mm. And I'm so, so I've recognised that in actual fact the work that the the healing work that I do with my hands is actually a form of light language, signed light language. That's how you would describe it. But I didn't have that 
those words back then. In fact, I don't think we even had those word, words five years no. ago. Right. So I've always just called it light healing where I because I see light coming out of my fingers and doing codes and things. So that's essentially the story of me. But the body of work that channeled through me, which I actually wrote it into my book, Mind Your Own Vibration, because that's the main philosophy of it. Right. The fact of the matter is that we are, and this all, all leads into the new human, we're evolving into becoming a being of light in human form. That's what's happening on the planet right now. For those who are more advanced in their, in their, you know, in their personal work, and everyone else will be coming along as well. No one's missing out on this, right, whether they know no. it or not. Um, so... We're becoming the new human. We're just, it's just part of our evolution. It's the evolution that we're naturally going through. The planet's going through it. We're going through it. Everything's going through this evolution. And um, the main thing about the teachings is that we're all one. Therefore, to change the world, I must change myself. To heal the world, I must heal myself. And so... The work, if there was such a thing, for each and every one of us to evolve all together collectively is for me to only mind my own vibration, to be so focused on keeping my vibration clean and high that everyone around me moves into that frequency as well, right? We all know this sort of stuff. We hear it in different ways. Um, so... So, yeah, so we're becoming homo luminous or like human light, basically. Um, and it's about, it's about being in your highest frequency and from your highest frequency just simply being who you be in the world and that's how we change the world, one person to the next, to the next, to the next. So whoever you're talking to, if you're in your highest frequency, whatever comes through you is for their highest good because we're all one, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I've been working with people through that. And, of course, the very first thing is to heal any trauma that you have. And when I say trauma, I'm talking about um, objective trauma. Big or little, it's all the same. It's all the same, every single bit. Even the little hurts that we have when we're children, when our mum says, no, you can't have that lolly. Yeah. They all are the same. Not to diminish trauma, and I've had a lot in my life, I'm sure pretty much all of us have. Yeah. Not And not to diminish that, but what I now understand is that it doesn't matter what the trauma is, what matters is what you made it mean about you. So the belief you attached to it about yourself, it's always about yourself. Yeah. And then all of the trauma that you've got and the beliefs that you made it mean about yourself, you're projecting out into the world on everyone else again we're all one so whatever you're projecting out there or whatever you think of someone else is actually what you think of yourself at the bare min at the bit the bare minimum so i hope i answered your i hope i introduced yeah. myself and uh, got got some things <laughs> going yeah there. yeah no it, it, it's 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 just been, it's just been fascinating listening to you and sort of like um, you know the energy that's been that's been coming off you as well has been up is absolutely amazing and it kind of like again again you know we were talking about um you but you being on my show you know the synchronicity about how that came about and how much life is synchronicity you know so looking back to um you know uh you know reading Wayne Dyer and that or listening to Wayne Dyer and then he mentioned Abraham Hicks and you get in the book but then the fact that you kept subconsciously, you kept putting the book off, but in the end, the universe went, well, if you're not going to do it us yourself, we're going to make you do it. So we're going to, unfortunately, make you ill so that you've got the time to actually read this because we want to get that message out there. And that's exactly what happens, right? And, and again, you know, you say the universe does that, but I say there's a version of me that's in non-physical that mm. had led, led me to that because I believe in oneness, right? So, or I know I know oneness, 
that there is me, the physical aspect. And this was the second thing that all that is said to me. They were saying all the time, we are all that, I'm doing this because that's where I kind of hear, yeah. hear it. Um, we are all that is, all that was and all that ever will be. And one day they added a little bit. They said, and so are you. And my mind was like, oh, okay, so I'm a physical aspect of that. I'm not disconnected from it. I'm not separate from it. I'm not some lowly human being. Oh, my God, that is so exciting, right? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, the, the universe is us. We are the universe. I am you. You are me. We, we just are one, just sort of like vibrating slightly different to being a different form and experience. And, and I love that you said it's vibrating slightly different because that brings me to the point about the trauma, right? Because what happens is every single time we have an experience that hurts us or is traumatic, we make it mean something about us and we, and we pull in the energy of the feeling that we felt when we were having the experience. So I call them the trauma twins the belief that we made it mean about ourselves and the the stuck energy of the feeling that we didn't allow ourselves to truly feel because, you know, we all know if you cry, someone will give you something to cry about, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we suppress, we suppress those things. Um, and so those trauma twins sit in your energy field magnifying uh, or magnetizing to you other pla other things that will happen that will make you feel the same thing and believe the same thing. So the fr the vibration. So when you've got like let's say for instance, you know, I'll meet with a client, and when I meet with a client, I step into their energy field. I become one with them while I'm doing this work, and I see the hundreds and hundreds of trauma twins inside them. And they look like dark spots, right? Or shadow, mm -hmm. let's call it that. <laughs> now, the thing about that is that with every trauma twins, set of trauma twins that you just sit with, be present with, feel into and start doing the work around, and they, the space that they occupy gets turned into light, which is lighter, which means that we can vibrate a little bit higher. So the more inner work you do, not to the point where you're trying to do inner work on things that don't exist. And by the way, that happens too, just so everyone knows. Many of us are still doing work that's already been done. Right. It's like setting a goal and then never understanding that you've you've reached your goal. Like I remember I heard someone say once um, I had a goal to buy a new car and they said, but you've already had a new car. So you've already you've already achieved that goal. You've got to make the goal a new goal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and we often do that, I think, with our healing work. And I think there's a lot of people stuck in doing the shadow work, but they've already done it. All they need to do now is recognise that, become who they truly are, who they still don't believe they truly are. So there's some work to be done there and to just shine our light into the world which more and more of us are doing. But with regards to the vibration and raising your frequency, the most important work to do is that inner work to release those shadows inside you so that the space that they're occupying, the energy that they're taking transforms into light and lightness. Yeah, yeah, so, so um, true. And, of course, the, what we also need to remember is um, and I think this is where some people do um, fall into the trap as well, is where they are, um, you know, they start doing all this work and, you know, bringing in the light and everything. But they forget that they still need to be grounded here on Earth to be able to do physical things. Um, I, you know, I, I remember once um, somebody coming, coming to me, uh, came to an afternoon tea I was um, running and she was a thin, thin thing. Um, and she said, uh, yeah, I don't eat some normal food. I'm always on juice in food and that's so I can keep my vibration raising high. And she wasn't there half the time. And that, you know, and I said to her mum, give us some potatoes, you know, just give us some reason to, to ground her because you you can't, you, you, if you embody in the light and the love and the joy, 
you still need to be here on earth to be able to create that energy and to be able to physically um uh be you know you wouldn't have chosen to come to earth at this time if you weren't to be in a, this physical body yeah no i love that you bring that up because yes one of the very first things that happened with me is that i'd get a lot of phone calls from people oh you know i've got this thing happening and i can't I, I think I'm losing my mind and it was like kind of manic. It scared me at first because I've always been like, like I'm a Virgo, I'm super practical, I'm so grounded, it's ridiculous. Um, so I never had that problem. It, I never experienced any kind of um, ungroundedness in my spirituality and I'm very blessed and lucky for that. Um, but... Yeah, a lot of people used to come to me in the early days and say, or, or they, someone, I'd get a phone call from someone saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm working with this client or I've got a friend and I think they're losing their mind or because exactly what you're talking about, because there's these beliefs in a spiritual, in the spiritual world that, um, and when I mean the spiritual world, I mean in the people who work in the spiritual and, and dabble in spiritual as human beings. <laughs> yeah. um, there's so many beliefs around what you should eat, what you should do, blah, 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 blah. And honestly, there's no one truth. Whatever works for you. Like, for instance, and I don't know if you get into food conversations much here on your show. I haven't really seen anything about that. We've, we've, had, we've I, had a couple. So, oh, okay. So, um, and I love to, to tell this to people because it really breaks through that um, stereotype. So, when obviously, when I first started doing this work and I, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know anything about spirituality. So I joined spiritual circles and tried to learn and things like that. I ended up moving away from that because I came to realise that um, what I was being told was other people's beliefs. Mm -hmm. But at one point I did stop eating meat and become vegan and then raw um, and all sorts of things, right, and I got really, really sick. Yeah. I mean, really sick to the point that my legs were, I, I was going to skin doctors. They were trying to figure out what was going on with me. I had insect bites on me. There were no insects. It was just the most freaky thing, right? Um, and so for the past five years, I have been strict carnival, right? And I am more in my spirituality than I ever was. And it's a more it's more a natural part of me now. It's it feels to me like becoming this evolved being, this homo luminous, this being of light walking the planet, you go back into our natural way of being. And our natural way of being is to feed ourselves with a source of um, sustenance that is like ourself. And you know, I know lots of spiritual people now who are also carnivore. When I first started, I was like, eh, everybody's going <laughs> to tell me I'm wrong. But I know plenty now of spiritual people who are carnivore as well and they've had the same experiences. You know, um, we've got to feed what works for us individually. Yes, you you might be a great vegan for, for your entire life and it might work for you, but it didn't work for me and it wasn't because I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> yeah. or I wasn't spiritual enough or anything like that. Again, it's about, you know, the, the highest level of spirituality is self-love and self-care. And that means taking care of the human form that you're here in as the physical manifestation of the non-physical. Because yeah. that's what we are. We're the physical manifestation of the universe or the non-physical. So we have to take care of this physical form, whatever that looks like for each and every one of us, and we get to make that decision ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And and again, you you know, it's it's also the type of food you eat as well. If you're eating more of a natural, healthy um, diet with or, um, with meat, you know, then that is good food. It's when the the I, I think the issue came in because we started eating so much processed meat 
and food yeah. and animals that have been injected and yeah. not you know not grass fed um and that and that i think triggered more of the um that you can't eat meat because you weren't you weren't eating quality yeah and also i mean the farming practices look don't get me wrong i'm a carnivore but i actually live in a country town and my food comes from here and you know i i totally get that you know and i know that even even if i was now eating vegetables which i haven't eaten for years by the way and i'm still okay <laughs> i don't have scurvy <laughs> but um if if i were on a vegan diet i would be doing all of that here as well you know natural eating your the, the food that's in your area absolutely and that's what i mean by eating our natural diet you know so yeah 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 and i know it's hard for some people you know with the cost of, of food and stuff like yeah. that but you know but again it's it's what feels right for you and if you can at least once a week eat something that's much more natural um uh, you know um whether it's meat it's plant whatever you know because a lot of the vegan food or even the gluten for all the free from stuff is so full of additives and not natural stuff anyway yeah no absolutely and uh you know i kind of credit the carnivore diet with my good health but it could also just be because i don't eat any anything from within a supermarket Mm. right it could well and truly be that although i do have a sweet tooth so <laughs> i allow myself to have little treats i'm not a complete maniac <laughs> you can you can make your own healthy chocolate i make my own chocolate all the time absolutely absolutely yeah, only, only, only takes a few minutes as well um so yeah yeah so 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 easy <laughs> so how so if if what so if someone's watching this today and they kind of like okay so what's the first what's the first step that i that i need to take to becoming this this this, this new type of human what would be the first thing that you would suggest that they thought they did what would it be well i mean uh, from where i stand now right um, back then i would have said well start to meditate start to listen to yourself blah 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 but to be honest in this day and age right here right now if you could simply love yourself unconditionally it's like magic right you would just blossom and you will start listening to yourself and you will start hearing those non-physical aspects of you that are always there supporting you and always there giving you answers it's absolutely true what they say that you know this law of attraction thing what you when you ask it is given we say we talk about that in the book as well it's an absolute truth and what that means from our perspective is that whenever you reach out for or call out for or ask for or pray for from your physical form the non-physical aspects of you in other space-time dimensions all come rushing towards you to answer your asking every single time so start paying attention yeah and that is the thing the paying the attention the synchronicities the people you know the opportunities that that, that come that come your way and this is this is really coming up more and more in all the conversations that i'm having with people now is the, the synchronicities and yeah. the paying attention to you know being aware of what's going on um in in your life not in the world in general but in your life but also you know having saying that you could also pay attention to what's happening in in the in the world and then bring that in and figure out well what's it making me feel because that will be something that's also inside you that needs to be healed right so when uh, disasters happen in the world like um like when COVID happened we were saying to people a year before you've got to because i uh, know there was a specific thing that happened during that same time it was everyone started talking about the children mm. the missing children and such and we had been saying for years 
You've got to heal your in. You've got to mother your inner child. You've got to take care of your inner child. That's just a reflection of what's going on inside you. So if that gives you a problem, come back inside. It's the same with the uh, recent election in the US. Whatever you're feeling about that, you need to go, oh, ah, it's not about that. It's actually about the feeling that it makes me feel and the beliefs that it makes me sit into that make me feel the anger or the fear or the sadness because they're the only three things that you need to worry about, fear, anger and sadness. How does it make me feel? And what do I believe about that or that person or those people or because that's all got to do with you. It's got nothing to do with those people. That's got to do with your trauma twins, the feeling that you've suppressed and the thing that it's you've made it mean about you. Always, 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 always come back to yourself, mind your own vibration. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you get to writing a book? Was it something you'd always wanted to do or did it, or did it just one day they, um, you were guided, okay, I need to write a book now? Well, I wish it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that, that moment of the download of the, the teachings, I knew in that moment that I, that I was writing a book about it. And it took me, it was 12, 13, 14 years later, I have made, I've made many attempts to write this book um, and, I mean, I must have like 10 different versions where I've started and all my shit's gotten in the way, right? I'm not good enough, I can't do it, I can't write, da, 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 all of that stuff. But in actual fact, I now know that it was waiting for some circumstances to happen in my life that would then show me something about my life that would then need to be included in the book, right? Um, so a couple of years ago I had been caring for my mum and then she passed and then exactly a month later my oldest son also passed. He'd been living with bowel cancer for three years, so within a month of each other. So I lost the woman who was my mother and I lost the child that made me a mother, my firstborn. And I didn't know at the time, but these things were done were for a reason. The timing was perfect as always. That's not to say it was a good thing, <laughs> not in any way, shape or form. But I had um, within, I think within a month of him dying, I joined a program uh, that was about writing your book in a week. And it was a month after, so two months after, two, three, four months after I, I did the course um, and I wrote a lot of the book, but I was still in my own stuff and, and there was still a chapter that I didn't know about. So I went and redid it again about three months later and I wrote it. It just all poured out of me in exactly the right um, way. It was the day that... About about four weeks before mum died, I was sitting at her kitchen table, six o'clock in the morning, because I, I was caring for her at the time, and I started typing the book. I started writing. I'm sitting in my, you know, it's, it's this time in the morning and my mum is in the bedroom dying and my son's down the road dying. And then I never wrote another word after I wrote those, that just that, like, introduction. So I knew it was coming, right? <laughs> anyway, I did the second Write Your Book in a Week, it just poured out of me chapter by chapter in perfect order and I thought I was done. And then I had a visitation from my son and he talked to me about karma and about how what happened, how it was created through that and how it was created through having a really big fear about a particular thing about having that thing happen to his children that created it, so to speak, right? Um, and so I sat down the next day and I wrote the, the, the a chapter that went right into the middle that had been missing. So, again, it's that synchronicity. It's that perfect timing. Don't ever worry about, I used to think, God, I'm such a waste of space. I'm, I've got this book. I've got these teachings. I'm supposed to write the book. Why the hell am I not doing any of these things? 
and now I know. Yeah. And it was through the most horrific thing that's ever happened to me, <laughs> to be honest. But, um, yeah, so... So that was the story of writing the book. Thank you for asking. Oh, no, they, 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 they. It took 12, 12, 13, 14 years from the download of the information. I, it was ready. I, I was teaching it. I was sharing it. I was embodying it. But those few little things had been missing. I had to go through those deaths and those experiences in order to then really tell the whole story of how things are created in our lives. Yeah, yeah, there, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it is, every, you know, the, I mean, the, you know, there's always this everything in divine order. It is in, it, it, it is, you know, and that's the spiritual and the human aspect um, of things. It's like, keep trying things, still be curious and keep doing the work. And, and when the timing is right, it will happen. It will happen. That's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. So don't beat up on yourselves. I, I think that's the greatest lesson for me was that I spent a hell of a lot of time beating up on myself, telling myself I was wrong and I shouldn't be doing it by now and, blah, you know, all of the nasty inner critic things. <laughs> um, but that was because I'd actually been doing that my whole life. Right? So... I like to say that it took me a decade to embody the teachings and to be ready to then be out in the world in a bigger way because I've always been, people, I've been on stages with other psychics and mediums and things doing stage shows and people are off stage have pulled me to the side afterwards and said, why were you cloaked? Why are you not showing your true self? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you know, so it was all in good timing. It was all perfect. There was never anything going wrong. And um, and that's, if you can lean into that, there's never anything going wrong. Strive for what you want. And if you don't hit the mark, know that there's something else that needs to be to happen to be brought into whatever for it to truly be what it is supposed to be. Because this book is not what I thought it was going to be, not in any way shape or form <laughs> i i love that yeah yeah don't expect anything to be what you think it's going to be it's what it is supposed to be exactly it's got its own frequency its own energy that it needs to be yeah yeah, yeah ab <laughs> absolutely so as you know i do guided meditations and angel oracle card readings and each week i like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching so, Anne, would you like me to do a mini guide meditation or would you like me to pull an oracle card? I think I'd like an oracle card. Oh, funny enough, they're in my hand as we speak. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of so, course. as um, uh, though uh, anyone who may know me knows, and those who don't, when I do the cards, um, I do them for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because even though I work with past lives we go into the past to learn heal from understand so it doesn't affect us in our present life and when I take people into the future it's to see understand and know the future and the steps you can take to get there so you can bring back to your present so um, let's just give these a cleanse and a bless so what does Anne and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time what does Anne and everyone who's watching this need to make their highest good at this moment in time? Okay, let's see what card wants to come out for us today. Beautiful. Journey by moonlight. Believe in magic. Oh. Isn't that a most beautiful card to come out? And, you know, with what? kind of like ties in with what we're talking about you know and confirmation for you and about what you're you're doing you know and I changed the word believe because I always um, I don't like the word believe I like the word no you either know or you don't know um so you know know that there is magic happening in the world um around you through you in you at this moment and if you can stay in that childlike curiosity 
of magic and wonder and exploration, um, then the journey that you're you're on is going to create that beautiful magical life for you. So for you, Anne, it really is confirmation about you what you're doing. You're on that most perfect journey. And for those of you that are watching, if you're not there yet, this this is saying to you, bring that childlike curiosity, that exploration, and know that there is magic out there when you when you accept it and you allow it into your life. So I think that's an absolutely beautiful card and perfect for what what you've been talking about. And I love it too. And as soon as I saw it, where it says believe in magic, do you know what I heard in my head though? Believe in yourself because you are magic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we 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 are all totally um we are all to totally magic. Uh and and chill, you know, and children know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, they just um society, peer pressure, well, whatever just takes them out of that. But but you know, yeah, we are all all magic. So Anne, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? I, I really love to finish off a conversation like this by sharing something so profound that if you can sit with it, it will change everything. And don't just hear it with your ears. I want you to actually hear it with every fibre of your being. Hear it with every cell inside you because it's an absolute truth about you. And... I don't want you to believe it. I just want you to know it. It's not about believing it. It's about knowing it. They said to me once that um, if only you could believe this, you were born perfect and you haven't changed yet. You were born perfect and you haven't changed. Now imagine if you could just go out into the world knowing that. I was born perfect and I haven't changed. Therefore, all of this stuff that I think about myself, about others and about everything else is not true. So what is the truth? Yeah, I got shivers down my back when you said that. It's, it's I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I don't live in that 24-7. Because I'm a human being, <laughs> I'm yeah. still, you know, we, 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 that's what we're here for, to be a human being, to have the joys and the struggles and the, the, the fight and the, you know, whatever, and to continue to remember in moments who we really are, that we're the physical manifestation of source energy. Yeah. And so we've got to stop thinking that we're less than, less than anything or anyone yeah beautiful beautiful words thank you so so much so i hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found insightful because i know i definitely have so if people want to connect with you and how do they do that and do you have anything free to offer our viewers i absolutely do so first and foremost i am a facebook facebook girl from way back I've been on there since the beginning um, and I built, literally built my business on Facebook from, from right at the beginning. Um, and so I love a conversation on Facebook. I love getting friends, <laughs> come and connect with me and converse with me. And I also have, um, I've got a free community membership. It's not on Facebook. It's actually on my website. Um, but within that is a vault, <laughs> I call it. All that was is what I call it. <laughs> so it's all the stuff, uh, activations and teachings and channelings and things that I did before I actually wrote the book and it was published. So it's all of the teachings in the way they were then. They've changed now, of course, because we're ever evolving. But um, heaps of stuff like activations for, for money, for love, for health, 
uh, there's a uh, an activation to activate your, your inner healer, which is a really good one. Um, but there's a lot of stuff to explore in there. So I'd love for if you want to know more about what we do or experience it, come and join that. Um, and, um, yeah, so those two places. And that's at, um, I think you're going to share the link, but it's annalexon.com slash link. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very straightforward and everything is everything is, is there which is absolutely amazing you just click on it and go oh i'm there i'm there um which is which is absolutely perfect so thank you so much and for sharing your wisdom it's been an absolute um pleasure having you on the show today and for anyone watching you know i personally would like to invite you to a free live 20 minutes soul path discovery one-to-one -one video call with me and during our time together, we'll pull an angel or oracle card to gain clarity on what's happening in your life right now and what guidance your higher self or the angels may have for you. And if you feel called, I can also share how we could work together, whether through past life regression to heal deep seated patterns, future life regression to reveal your most aligned path or angelic Reiki for transformative healing at every level of your being. You know, this is an opportunity for you to heal deeply, connect with your soul's gifts and step confidently into the life you're always meant to live. So let's start this powerful journey together. And of course, you can also receive a free gift of connecting with your guides and angels PDF or a future life progression recording, as well as a couple of other free gifts by going to the link in the uh, description or comments. And again, thank you everyone so much for one watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of when this show goes live or my other show, Oracle Card and Meditation, Your Weekend Reset, which goes live every Friday at 3 p.m. Or I post new guided meditations. And remember, every time you like, share, subscribe, either my or on social media, YouTube, Facebook, etc., or Anne's or any of my other guests, you really are helping with the algorithms, with getting our information out there and being part of that um, ripple effect of bringing that absolutely unconditional love and joy into the world. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.